Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting guru Mark Zweig and his team of experts straight talk in your ear. Mark has more than 30 years of experience helping AEP and environmental firms thrive, and these podcasts deliver his invaluable management, industry, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop professionally, wherever you are. Hey, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. Our goal is to bring you some of the best and brightest minds that the AEC industry has to offer. Today, I am pleased to welcome back a very close friend of mine and a colleague, Will Swearingen. Will is the di- director of the research and development uh, department here at Zwei Group, and he's doing some pretty amazing things. And Will, you, will you, you, how long have you been here now? Randy, it's coming up on two years. Oh my real gosh! Quick. I remember that. Yeah, yeah you, th- you started out in M and A, and then you kind of moved over into this role, and and have never really looked back. Yeah, but I'll tell you what that uh, you know six eight months in the M and A group was invaluable. <clears throat> To uh, my understanding of of what it is that we do here at Zwide Group and the the industry as a total, um, but again, the, the last year and a half um, working with our R and D team and becoming the director of the R and D group um, has has been a lot of fun and it's been a, certainly been a challenge. Um, but but we have a lot of neat things coming down the pike right now and. Uh, We've had a great 2017. We've got a lot of neat products that we've put out. I think we've got 12 or 13 publications out so far, and we've probably got two more coming out in the 2017 season. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been exciting. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, there's, a, there's no shortage of information uh, coming out of the industry, and I'm, I'm always – intrigued and amazed at the responses that we get from our customers and our clients. Um, and, and that's one of the fun things for me is, is when we do get all the survey data back is, is going through all of it and hearing what people are, are dealing with on a day-to-day basis and what, you know, the struggles for a principal or, or an owner in an AE firm and how taxing it can p- potentially be on them. Um, people really open up in these books and in these surveys and, uh, it's, it's quite illuminating, but, um, 2017 has been a great year for firms. Uh, profitability as a lot of people know is, is way up. Uh, I think firms are as profitable as they have been in the last decade or, or longer. Um, we've seen the pre-tax pre-bonus profit up at uh, pre-recession levels. So, uh, to me, that's, that's an interesting thing to, to look at on a chart over time is 2008, 2009, what happened? Um, and when you start to see things approaching those levels, it, it is a pause. It, cre- or it creates a pause or, or a cause for concern um, as to, you know, where exactly we are right now and, and what the next couple of years might look like. So, yeah. I, and I think it's interesting. I mean, as I, as I look at your group, I, I walk back there quite a bit and everybody's kind of hunkered down, you know, in front of their computers, you know, busy crunching numbers, crunching data. There's so much information to consume. And I think sometimes even for, for leaders and owners of AE, design firms, they sometimes have a hard time wrapping their hands around all of this information and trying to make sense of it. And that's something that, you know, your, your team does with a a fair amount of ease, I shall say, and, 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 and definitely are able to kind of distill the nuggets uh, of, uh, of wisdom that can be discerned from, from all the information that we get from so many different organizations that are willing to participate in our surveys, which mind you, I mean, this is, this is the name of the game across industries and just about every vertical they have surveys that are done. People are, are trying to figure out exactly, um, you know, what, you know, what's, what's the next step in the industry, both on a micro level, but also on a macro level. And so I I know that you guys are busy trying to kind of make sense of the tea leaves if you will, and, and help, help firms be more productive, be more profitable and, uh, figure out what the next steps are, uh, you know, in terms of the growth of this industry and the trajectory that it's taken. I mean, we've got, I mean, I'm looking here and I'm already amazed at the number of books that are already out for, for 2017. You've got operating expenses. Uh, you've got, uh, the, what we call the PP and B, which is policy procedures and benefits, incentive comp. 
uh, marketing survey, principals, partners, and owners, recruitment and retention, which um, I actually had a, a hand in, which uh, I'm proud of, and certainly financial performance. And I know that the, the fee and billing uh, survey is coming out soon. I mean, all of these surveys you know, provide a wealth of information. And, you know, I wish we had time to go through each one of these books um, uh, individually. And of course we don't. I mean, we only have a, about a 30 minute time time frame on the podcast because we want to keep people engaged and keep them informed, but keep them moving on. So uh, for those of you on your treadmill right now that, that are getting your 30 minute run and we promise that we will end on time and mm-hmm. give you something to, to, to pause, to think about. But, but, but with all that said, what are some of your biggest takeaways so far this year? We are eight months into the year, uh, almost uh, at the end of uh, the eighth month of the year, August, uh, September's right around the corner. You know, what are some of your biggest takeaways and, and aha moments that have really kind of given you pause to consider what's what's actually taking place in the in the market marketplace from the design industry perspective? Sure. Well, you know, I kind of have to step back a little bit because I do get sort of consumed in the data and consumed in the numbers. Um, but just stepping back a little bit and looking at the overall strategy of these firms, I mean, we've got thousands of firms that interact with us and they all have a different strategy and they all have a different approach and they all dip, have a different end game. And so um, when you have all walks of life and, and all sizes of firms and all, all different strategies coming into a data set. Um, and then you try to, to parse it out by high profit or, or high growth or region or firm size, um, public market versus private, um, the, the public sector versus the private sector. Um, you really start to see the differences <clears throat> in, in what's taking place in some of these groups. Um, so again, just kind of the overall strategy that, that these firms are taking, whether they just want to be a high profit firm and sit back and, and cash checks for the next 10 years, or whether they're in the middle of an ownership transition and they really need to look to that next level of leadership. I know that, um, it's a well documented, the, the lost generation. Uh, I, I think it's <laughs> about the, the seven to, to 15 year, uh, engineer or designer with ex- experience that, uh, during the recession, either got laid off or never came into the industry as and or left it or left the industry. Yeah, (laughs) totally. And so, so, you know, you see a lot of, um, I I guess the aches and pains that firms are having to, to deal with to, to get through that ownership transition that they're, they're being faced with. I mean, we've got a lot of people, um, who call in and they're, they're 60 years old and they're, they're looking for information on, how to sell their firm or, or how to transition to the next piece of ownership or yeah. how do you incentivize the next group? You know, how do you, how do you dole out your profits to make your plan make sense for your people? If that makes, if that makes any sense. It does. I mean, succession planning is huge. And unfortunately as, as it is in, in people's personal lives, uh, when, when you don't make plans for the future, it's the same way in, in a, uh, a form of a business form where companies just don't think about that. They're just constantly out there grinding on a daily basis, uh, doing work, doing great work, mind you. Um, but not necessarily thinking about the future in terms of from an ownership perspective. Cause like you said, that 60 year old guy or gal that's running a firm, you know, some of them feel like they're going to live forever and then some are ready to get out, but they don't have anybody to turn the firm over to. And so it's kind of like, well, what do you do? And we, we get those calls quite a bit here at Zwei Group in terms of what do I do from an ownership transition perspective. And then unfortunately, we also get those calls from people that are maybe a decade or two older than that. So you get those 75 year old and 80 year old firm owners that are like, I don't know what to do. I've got a fairly profitable firm, but I do want to retire and I have nobody to give this thing to. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to back back again to that strategy and, and, and the things that they've put in place over the years. So one thing I, f- I feel like I see a lot is people that are ready to sell but may not have been investing back into the firm and they don't have the processes and they don't have the right technology. They may have the right people and they may be very profitable and they may have great clients. But from the outside looking in, uh, if, if you don't have the processes and, and 
the infrastructure in your own firm built out. Um, and, you know, if you just haven't made the right choices or investments over the last five or 10 years, you could be zapping value from your firm. Absolutely. Um, so again, kind of looking at the whole life cycle from strategy to marketing, to sales, to incentivizing your staff, um, pumping your profits back into the right places of your business, uh, and, and just being investment minded, uh, is something that I've, I've really noticed some firms are very good at. We have, we have some people that participate in these that are very aggressive firms and, and all of these things are top of mind. And then we have other, other groups that come in and, and they're really trying to figure out what the right, what the right flavor is and, and, and what they need to be doing. Because like, like we've said, I mean, this has been a profitable time for groups. So, so people are sitting on some money to, to either invest or, or cash out or, uh, just do whatever with. And, and so these products are really geared so that people can see what other, other firms like theirs are doing, what other firm owners are doing. Right. Um, you know, could you take a, a pay cut or, or are could, other people taking pay cuts to exactly. do what they have to do? So, uh, you know, over the last five or seven years, you know, it's been interesting looking at the principals, partners and owners survey. Um, we've seen base compensation actually go down. So I, I think some people are taking slight pay cuts uh, to improve cash flows. But then again, at the end of the year, you look at um, a firm that's 15 or 20% has 15 to 20% profit on their net service revenue. Um, there's a lot of cream there for them to, to pull out in a profit distribution or bonus type scenario. So there's, there's a lot of different ways that groups can can navigate um, whatever it is that necess- doesn't necessarily ail them, but the challenges that they're facing. Uh, because we know every every group has a challenge, um, whether it's an easy one or a very convoluted challenge. Um, but that's really something that uh, that we try to figure out here. Uh, you know, looking at the recruitment and retention survey, we pulled some of that data from our best firms. Uh, questionnaire Mm -hmm. that we just wrapped up and uh, it's going to be a neat uh, award season for Zweig Group. I know. Hot Firm's coming up in a couple of weeks uh, in Seattle, Washington. I believe uh, the 21st and 22nd of September and uh, at the Fairmont uh, Olympic in in downtown Seattle. So it should be uh, pretty exciting to see all those firms that are winning awards as hot firms and uh, best firms to work for and, and, uh, marketing and excellence award winners. And basically these are the best of the best in the design industry. It's a, it's akin, as I like to say it to the Inc. 500, 5000. But, you know, all of the information that we glean from these surveys and, and also from these award winners really helps us to kind of formulate a map, if you will, of, of kind of what a successful firm looks like. And these are the groups that are engaging with us at the highest rates. Yeah. Um, they are taking this information and they are using it and, and they're deploying it inside their firms and making the best use of it. You know, an interesting stat that I saw was that the average, and these are some of the best firms. These are some of the top performing right. firms out there had 24% growth. Uh, well, people that joined their firm, full time employees that joined their firm. And that actually netted them just an 8% growth. So when you think about you've got 23% sort of turnover, you've, you've got 14, 15% leaving your firm and you're trying to grow on top of that. So you've got 8% net growth. You've got 15 people, 15% leaving the firm and your HR department is having to cycle through a quarter of your firm each year. Wow. I mean, that's. That's, that's, those are some sober, sobering numbers for sure. To me, that's amazing. You've got, uh, you've got to be making the right hiring decisions and you have to be putting the right people in those HR positions to be making those decisions. Um, because those numbers to me, they, they feel unsustainable, it, but that's reality. Yeah. You're having yeah. to, to basically turn your firm over a quarter every year. Every year. 
So after about a four years, you've kind of turned over, theoretically, you've turned over yeah. the whole firm yeah. and it's totally brand new. And now we know people stay on beyond that. But, you know, it, it begs the question. And since you're kind of going down that route, I mean, as, as we're seeing uh, on the recruitment side, as I'm working on recruiting strategies for the design and construction industry, you know, we're seeing that, you know, there there's just, I say it over and over again, there's just a finite supply of people. And we're recycling through them in different areas of the industry, um, from engineering firms to architectural firms to environmental firms, geotechnical, construction management. I mean, so I think the reality is part of it is, you know, firms figuring out a way, one, to invest in STEM education for the coming generations that are coming after the people that are currently in the industry, but then also getting really creative from a hiring standpoint with the people that they do bring on board and doing a lot of professional uh, development to kind of bring these people along as quickly as possible so they can be productive members of those organizations. And it's just, it's, it certainly is not easy. And sometimes when you look at the numbers, you just want to cry <laughs> because it's like, oh my God, is it that, is it really that bad? And everybody's not at the same place when it comes to turnover. I think the industry average for turnover is like 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that bad, but, but for a firm that's trying to grow by 10%, if you lose 10% and you're a 300 person firm, then you're, 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 you're having to, you know, basically hire 60 people a year just to achieve the growth um, goal that you have. Yeah. It's, it's truly amazing. Yeah. And it, going back to those growth goals, it, it is, it, it, it is the strategy that the firm sets in place. I mean, do you want to grow or do you just want to stay as the same size. I think that this is something that a lot of firms want to do. They want to stay, uh, 48 people. Right. They want to stay in that, that comfort zone. They want to sit back and, and collect their checks. Um, but th these are the people that I think are calling us at the age of 60 saying, how do I, how do I get out of right. this? How yeah. do I get out of this situation? Yeah. Um, they've, some people have really zapped some incredible value opportunities by, by sort of just sitting on their laurels and and being and living comfortably, yeah. Um, and I think you know if I if I could add to it, I, I was my wife was telling me a story the other day, and I just this is kind of appropriate. My son was playing musical chairs, and he's really fast, so he can get around and <laughs> and get. He always gets a seat, but you know, a lot of these firms are playing musical chairs. Um, in terms of the way the market is going and they're pretty comfortable right now. And they, you know, they keep every time the music stops, they have a seat to sit down, but eventually some of these firms are going to stop. The music's going to stop for them and, and they're not going to have anywhere to sit. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. And it, it has to be scary. If I'm a 48 or 50 year old, um, you know, design firm owner and I haven't really thought about the next, um, uh, generation of ownership or I haven't, uh, socked enough money away to 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 set up a proper transition plan. It's got to be scary, but I don't think that it's ever too late to get the ball rolling. You just have to start moving forward and make a decision. But I think the issue with a lot of people is that while some have their head in the sand, they don't know what's going on. There are others that are just oblivious, totally oblivious. And, um, you know, that's where this information comes in handy because it does give you you know, uh, uh, it, it allows you to tech, check your pulse compared comparative to other firms to really see where you are. And if there are shortcomings or deficiencies, you know, it's not too late to try to correct some of them. Yeah, absolutely. And there's room for organic growth and there's room for inorganic growth. The, the M&A track, as I think everybody knows, has been quite hot. Very was, hot. Lightning hot. Lightning hot uh, over the last uh, few years. And I think it's it's just going to continue to be so. Uh, but I did find uh, an interesting stat from our, our hot firm survey. And that was um, looking at firms who did M&A versus firms that did not do M&A. &M mm -hmm. Over a three-year time frame, they both averaged out at about 80% growth. Um, now the difference there is that is the dollar amount of growth because um, the firms that did do M and A grew by thirty million over that time frame, where right. other where firms that didn't do it um, grew by fifteen million. So um, the firms that that did submit to the hot firm conference and the, the actual winners um, 
have done some amazing things when you think about the average growth rate year over year is about 10% for a firm. Um, these guys are doing 20 to, to 50% a year sometimes. Yeah. Um, and they didn't all do it through M and A. Um, some of these were critical hires in, in critical markets. Some of these were finding that person that can get the right client in the door and then just start building the shop right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't discount the, the quality, um, that your firm can achieve whenever that, that new hire does come in the door. Um, and I know that we've seen that happen quite a few times uh, with the recruiting team. I know that oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's something that you, uh, preach and, and I've seen it a handful <clears throat> of times in my, you know, short tenure here is yeah. somebody will get hired in a market and they'll, they'll blow that office up and into a 25 person office in, in a couple in no years. Time. In yeah. No time. I mean, we, I mean, I can, I'm, I'm just thinking of one individual that we placed within about a 12 to 1500 person, uh, firm. And this one individual in one office in the Southeast, um, basically brought about half a million dollars in business with him day one. And it has grown since then to the point where they look around and they're like, man, that was like one of the best hires that we ever made. And sometimes you, that's all you need is one or two hires like that. If you're a smaller firm and you can bring a rainmaker in and, and, um, you know, can, and that individual can really be successful. It, it is a game changer for an organization. And let alone, like you, like, like you said, uh, when you talk about the inorganic growth of, you know, going through, uh, M and A and, and we've seen so much activity. I recently had, uh, Ozzy Nelson on the show and I look at his growth, which is almost stupefying when you look at the numbers. Um, 2003, he was doing about $12 million a year. He went to about 50 million by 2007. Of course, he took a break as everybody else did with the downturn in the economy, but then he came back up and went from like 40 million in 2014 to like 88 million in 2016. And he's on target to do something obscene in this next year. And every time I look up, there's another post about Nelson uh, acquiring a new firm. And and so, you know, there is a lot of opportunity and activity that's taking place in the design industry right now. And, and I would encourage everyone to take note of what's happening and how people like an Ozzy Nelson and others are leveraging this information and these data points to, to make very, very astute decisions about, you know, the next areas of growth and, you know, where they want to see their company go, whether it's through acquiring another firm or just in terms of moving into a different market with your current uh, existing organization. Yeah. And, and looking at that growth, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, our salary surveys this last year really brought up something that was pretty eye opening to me. Uh, we, I mean, the standard is two and a half to three percent uh, growth in, in compensation over the years, um, but when you break it down by job level and job title and job position, it was really interesting um, for me to see that entry level positions in newly minted engineers. Uh, compensation compared to last year went down considerably. You know anywhere from from three to seven percent um, and then your your managers your department managers and your principals compensation actually went up so I think I think one way that some firms are creating some cost savings is is that they are hiring these new young hungry people right. um, we have a lot of foreign nationals that are here um, that have incredible skill sets and are hungry to work um, and I think that some of these larger firms are, are really leveraging that phenomenon, I right. guess. Um, and so when, when you look about, when you look at that phenomenon or the, the happening of entry level wages kind of going down in some areas of the U S and then also shifting the workload from people who, who could be doing more management level uh, business development type activities and, and moving some of their technical design type roles a little bit further down the org chart. Yeah. And then you look at the differential and the billing rates for those people and, and where that's really where I feel like a lot of the cream can get generated is, is in properly appropriating uh, your staff 
per project. I, I kind of get what you're saying, and and you 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 mentioned that uh, that that idea of the cream about skimming something off the top, if you will, of the extra, uh, the margin that firms can find. Right. Um. I mean, you know, if I if I'm sitting here and just to kind of you know piggyback off of what we've been talking about, if I'm if I'm a a, a firm owner of, of, of you know, because again, our audience is wide and varied. I mean, we have people that are, are, are running a thousand person firms and people that are listening to this podcast that are working at those firms. And then also people that are running firms or own firms of, you know, 15 to 20 to 30 people. I mean, what 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 advice would you give them at this point in time, given the information that you know and what we've been talking about here in terms of real firm growth and what that looks like, what advice would you give those individuals right now? I'd say to the younger generation, be hungry, um, keep your head down and, and knock it out. Um, the, the firm leaders that are in place right now are, are aging and they're going to continue to age and, and they're going to be moving out the door. Um, and then you've got that next level that's going to be coming in and is going to be running these firms. And, and for a lot of these people, they're, they're operating blind. And yeah. that's really what our products are here to do is, is try to help them get a benchmark, get, get a baseline for spending on marketing or how many people are you going to hire this next year? Right. Um, what, what are your growth plans? What markets do you want to get into? What markets are hot? Um, there's there's just a wealth of information that's locked inside of these books and and we'd like to just give them away to people because I feel like the industry really needs it that bad. Yeah. Um but it takes time. It, it does. T- it takes effort it to put these things together. So Yeah, it, you know, and I know one thing we we've, we've kind of talked about, you know, ultimately having some type of application that people can utilize where everybody can participate in all of our surveys. The more participation that we get, the better our da- data becomes. Uh, I think over the long term. Um, and so, you know, one of the things, while this is not an infomercial for, for our surveys or any of that, it, it is an infomercial for the encouragement of firms in the design space to get involved, to share their information as much as humanly possible so that they can in turn take you know, the information that they're sharing and what everybody else is sharing and get a better idea as to where, where, you know, the current state of affairs in the industry and where things are headed. I mean, we try to do that on a regular basis year in and year out with our publications, but I could only imagine what it would be. And and we're only having a small sample to work from. And if we can get an even bigger sample, which, I mean, that's the challenge that anybody that's gathering data has in any industry or vertical. If we can get a bigger sample, um, that, that data could really prove to be, which is quite elusive right now, could really prove to be a game changer for firms that are really out there trying to make critical decisions about the future of their organization. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one challenge for us is how to make that process easier. Yeah. And smoother for the I know the, you're working participant. on it. <laughs> yeah, we've we've got some neat things in the works. Yeah. Um we've got some some great ideas and we've got some nice um sort of transitions with our I, IT department. And so it's going to be exciting over 2018. Hopefully we can get a few of these things rolled out and into your hands uh so that people can can really start to see what we're trying to do and and, and can feel how much easier it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, it's exciting. And, and, you know, with, with technology being what it is, I mean, I can be sitting on a plane and answer a bunch of questions. If I'm a firm owner and, you know, submit a survey uh, response questionnaire to you pretty easily, and then you can then go take that and, and crunch that data and um, spit it back out. And that's the nice thing about it is that what happens for those that actually do participate in our surveys, don't they get something, some kind of benefit um, for participation? Yeah, they get 65% off uh, a survey, Okay, which it's really like about $320. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some interesting things next year with our pricing models. I think we're going to be changing a couple things yeah. um, by trying to make it easier for for people to take these surveys. I think we're going to be able to offer some different discounts and and get people um, information quicker. Okay, all right. Well, well, listen, that's awesome. I I um I I appreciate you taking time and folks. You got to know that I, I I wrestled Will to uh, ask him to be on the show. We've been kind of going back and forth, and he's had a lot on his plate and. 
Um, I know this man needs a break just like we all do. I think you're, you're getting to go away in the next couple of days for, yeah. for some R and R with the family. You've got a newborn and God knows you need some rest. So yeah, we're, um, we're hopping on a plane at 6 30 AM tomorrow. Oh, so. well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I certainly do. I certainly do hope you, you guys have a great time. Listen, I do, I do want, I want the audience to learn a little bit more about who Will Swearingen is, but what was the last book that you read? The last book? Well, it was the Fee and Billing Survey by his wife group was the last book that I read. I read it about six times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's the thing. Well, that means it causes you to have to read fast. I mean, if you had your druthers and you could just sit down on a beach somewhere, what book would you pick up? Not fee and billing. It wouldn't be fee and billing. Uh, as good as our products are, I, I won't be sitting down uh, reading any of these over that time frame. Right. Um. Boy, I don't know. I've I've always liked World War II stuff. Okay. Uh, and what's the new one that's coming out? Uh, oh, Dunkirk. Or Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw the movie. It was. Uh, it Flyboys was... might have been the last one that I actually. Oh, okay. Read. Okay. It's been it's been quite some time since I actually sat down and read a book, but I think it was Flyboys. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. If you could binge watch one TV series, old or new, what would it be? Boy. I've been binge watching a lot of stuff on Netflix. Oh. <laughs> uh, just got just got done with Ozark. And oh then, wow! Uh, you saw the whole season. I heard it's, it's a pretty impressive it's pre- it's, show. It's pretty crazy. Um, House of Cards. Got to love the political thrillers. Right, right. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm pr- I'm a, more of an NBA kind of person. I, I sit down and just watch sports. Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, it's with a lot that, easier with, with that. In case are you are you a Magic Johnson or Larry Bird guy? I mean, Magic did amazing things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the well, now that you brought it to the Celtics, I, <laughs> you know, I like the move with Kyrie. I, yeah, I think there's another big move on the line. I, I don't think that they're done yet. I don't think that they're they're just going to sit back and uh, not have a big man. I think that they're going to be bringing in uh, Anthony Davis. That's oh, my that's my projection. Okay, I think okay. I think they got that a Pelican, would be a huge move. They got um, a Pelican flying north. A Pelican brief, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that would be quite interesting to say the least. I still say that even with the trade and even with the the bum hip for for Isaiah Thomas, that um, the the Cleveland gets back to the finals again. I don't. I just don't see LeBron being denied. Oh, there's no doubt. About yeah. That. So I think it's interesting. I think maybe the Celtics are a year or two away from that, but um, I just don't know if anybody's going to beat my Golden State Warriors. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> that 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 remains to be seen. But but all, all I know is that everybody's going to be glued to the TV for opening night at the NBA when the when the Celtics play the Cleveland Cavaliers. Absolutely, so that's going to be exciting. The Warriors so. have built something special out there, and, and yeah. they didn't do it by chance. You know that was uh, done very strategically. I believe Jerry West was kind of the the GM, the mastermind behind all that. So, oh, he had a lot to do with it. He had take, a lot take to do some with notes it, out there so. from Jerry West. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I mean, Will, I really appreciate you taking some time to to speak with our audience here on on the um, the Zweig Letter podcast. There is just so much great information out there that you guys are putting out in research and development, and I cannot wait for 2018. I know there's going to be some exciting stuff coming down the pike. So, again, I want to thank you so much, and and folks, I I, I certainly will. We'll uh, make sure in our show notes that we'll have links to all of these different surveys so you can get more information about them uh, and even see some samples of some of the surveys that we've done just this year. And of course, as always, on our website at Zweig. Uh, group.com, you can also get uh, or access our older surveys. And if there's things that we have people that call in all the time to, you know, get uh, surveys from a few years ago and kind of compare them to where things are now. So all of that information is available to you, right? Uh, you know, with a few strokes of a uh, few keystrokes on your, on your keyboard, laptop, wherever you are. So uh, you can always check that out. Um, Folks, I want to encourage you today to get a free subscription of Civil Plus Structural Engineer Magazine. And I want to sweeten the pot. We are throwing in a couple issues of the Zweig Letter 2. Just visit free tzl.zweiggroup.com and leave us your email address. We will take care of the rest. Everything will be delivered to you electronically. In addition, if your firm is looking to hire great talent, please join our mailing list for AEC Workforce. Just text the word HIREFASTER to 66866 
and that will get you on the list where you will learn more about this upcoming job board for the design and construction industry. It is launching very soon, and I cannot wait uh, to actually see this job board come to life. So uh, find out some more information about it. Just text the word higher faster to 66866 and you can sign up for uh, to get more information on aecworkforce.com uh, there. As a reminder, all Zwei Group media programs like this one are available in both podcasts and in some sit- situations, video format free for download on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube, just to name a few places. A link to all of this information, including uh, Will's contact information, will be in our show notes. And we'd love it if you'd go to iTunes or wherever you tune into this show and give us a five-star rating and share this link with a friend. Remember, sharing is caring. Folks, I'm Randy Wilburn, and you've been listening to Zweig Group Media, part of Zweig Group. Remember, we exist to make you more successful. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter Podcast. We hope that you can apply Mark's no-holds-barred advice to your daily professional life. For a free transcript of this or any episode of our podcast, please visit info.zweiggroup.com slash podcast. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about finance, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe to the print or digital version of the Zweig Letter online at zweiggroup.com slash publications. 